Do you know something? That in Europe, poverty is a mindset. Okay? But in Africa, poverty is a spirit. Hmm. Do you know why people are poor? It's because they tend to think that uh, something is following me. Something doesn't want me to be rich. Something doesn't want me to make it. There is a disease. There is a demon behind me. But is it really like that? Let me tell you, poverty is a mindset. You become poor because you think that uh, something is holding you. While it is you yourself, you're holding yourself. And uh, how are you holding yourself? One, where you put your faith. Let me tell you, the difference between a poor person and a rich person is faith. There's someone who has faith and he knows that if I do A, B, C, D, it's going to work out. Even the Bible says, God shall bless the work of your hands. The Bible doesn't say, God shall remove the demons which are holding your prosperity. That, those are two different doctrines. You don't want to work, yet you want to be rich, yet you want to achieve. You see, the reason why Africa is poor is not because we don't have all these resources. Actually, in Africa, it's the richest continent in the world. We have all kinds of minerals. We have all kinds of things. We have the best farmlands. We have the... Literally, just look at Africa and look at other nations and tell me where, which people should be rich. But why are Africans poor? It is because they have the mentality that uh, something is following my success, that I need to go and find someone so that he can, you know, cast out some demons of poverty from me. While the demons that you should be casting is your mind. It is your mind which is making you poor. How? You keep on believing and thinking that someone is after your wealth. Someone is after your destiny. Someone has stolen your star. Someone has done this and that. While you're not working, while you don't come up with concepts, remember the Bible says, that it is God who gives us the power to make wealth. So we already have the power to make wealth. Then we keep on looking at power from other different sources. You think that if I go to this pastor to pray for me, he's going to give me the power to be able to make wealth. While it is God who gives us the power. How? By blessing the work of our hands. First we need to work to do something. But people are already so much brainwashed into thinking that there's something else I can do to gain wealth apart from working, apart from coming up with ideas. And this is just a mindset. It's a mindset. Because when you hear people saying, there's no work, there's no work. Oh, we're waiting for the government to give us jobs. Which jobs are you waiting for? The government itself is broke. How, how will a broke entity give you something? It should save itself first because the government is broke. It doesn't have anything for itself. So how is it going to save you? For you to save your situation, you need to wake up and think outside the box. Let me give you a good example. Think of a story here. This is an example. And see how people get out of poverty when they change the mindset. Okay? Think of this example. Here's a woman with four children. She's not educated, but she's married to rather, you know, a guy who works with the government or, you know, he, he has some job. So this is the man who provides for the family. The woman does not have any job and she's not educated, but she has four children who are in school and, uh, you know, she's provided by the husband. Okay, cool. And something happens by bad, you know, just something happens. The husband God gets a car, car accident, gets into a car accident, and, and the husband dies. And here is a woman. She has been left with no one to take care of her needs. Her family back at home, they cannot take care of her because the, the, the parents are old, and maybe the sisters are not well off and all that. So she has to know how she's going to take care of her four children. Okay, she cannot be... Uh, just enter into another relationship with four children. Nobody, no, no other man is going to accept her with four children. And then she's in a state of poverty now. She's confused. What am I going to do? And then immediately something gets into her mind. And she says, okay, 
I think I have about a thousand shillings remaining from what my husband left. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to sell some fruits to my neighbors or to some friends or to people at the at the bus stage and try and make a living, okay? Because I have to feed my children. Even if I make 200 shillings, I'm going to feed my children for a while as I think on what to do, okay? Take that scenario. Then she starts selling these fruits and she makes on the first day 200 shillings in profit. The next day, she sells the same and she makes 300. By the time two weeks or one week is, is going, uh, getting over, she's already making close to a thousand shillings in a day. And then she thinks to herself after one month or two months, um, can I maybe look for someone else to help me in selling my fruits? And maybe the other person can have, uh, I can put a small joint at the, at the other angle, at the other corner of the street. And then that person can help me with my work. And she puts another person, she employs someone and tells them, okay, I usually make a thousand shillings in a day. Please help me in this. And I'm going to be paying you 10,000 shillings in a month or 5,000 shillings in a month. Why? Because a thousand a day is 30,000 in a month. And then she puts another person to help her the, uh, uh, with her job. And then after a month or two or three, she employs another one and another one and another. And finally, she has about five different outlets of her fruits. And now... She's making 5,000 shillings in a day. How much is 5,000 shillings in a day? It's 150,000 Kenya shillings. And now her biggest problem is I need to know how to coordinate my business. I don't know how I'm going to coordinate my business because now it's become a headache to do the supplies to all these different outlets. Now, here comes the fellow with the CV. Oh, I'm good in business development, management and business. I did BA, com, mass com, whatever thing. I don't know. Coming with these degrees and saying, oh, I'm very good in managing a business. Hey, madam, can you give me a job? And then she hires the educated fella, the, 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 the A material. She hires that one. What's going to happen? This A material is going to bring productivity to our work. And then, long story short, She's going to pay him 25,000 or 30,000 shillings and then this guy is going to make her business shoot up into hundreds and millions of shillings. And then she'll start buying properties and buying properties and doing this and that. And then it all started from one mindset. The moment she knew that she has nothing else left, that's the moment her mindset changed. changed. All that... Our poverty, why we are poor, is because our mindset is on seeking jobs. We seek jobs so much. We're looking for aid too much. We're looking for financial help so, so much. Yet, God wants, a, wants us to work so that he can bless the work of your hands. Wake up, get out from this mindset of poverty, the mindset of thinking that somebody is holding your blessings, somebody is holding your star, you, somebody is holding this and that. Get out from that mindset. It's just a mindset. It's a mindset of poverty. And others thinking that something is wrong with me. Someone bewitched me. Who bewitched you? It is your mind which bewitched you. It is you. The, the, the witches are in your mind. So wake up, go and work and think of something different. Think outside the box and poverty will not be your portion. That's why they say, if you want to hide something from Africans, hide it in a book, hide it somewhere where they cannot read, they cannot understand. They'll keep on praying in tongues and falling and doing all those kind of things. But they will never think outside the box and wake up and do what is supposed to be done. Think, open up your eyes and think. Don't have eyes which cannot see and ears which cannot hear.